You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee? I love this week. <laughs> good news, right? This is the good news of, of our Lord right here. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee the wrath that is to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say yourself that you're an ancestor of Abraham, because God can raise Abraham, ancestors of Abraham out of these rocks, or out of these chairs. We, we don't, you don't have a leg to stand on. The good news of our Lord. Is that, is that really good is that really good news? I read some things this past week as I was reading this and preparing for this lesson about how um, John or Luke should uh, read a little bit more Lutheran liturgy to understand what good news is before he says that John went around the rest of the countryside proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Is this, is this really good news? Bill's shaking. He's telling us what's coming, right? If you know that something's going to happen and you have a way to avoid it, is that not good news? It comes across a little bit weird though when we first read it, right? Because John calls all these people because all of these people who are coming are who? The tax collectors, the soldiers. There's probably some Pharisees there, some scribes that are trying to check out to see what's going on. And we're all in that mix, all of us. If we showed up there on the banks of the river with John doing his baptism and his preaching, he would probably look at some of us and lump us into that same group of people that are part of the brood of vipers. Because we don't bear fruit worthy of repentance. I'm talking more to myself here now than I am to any of you. That's the way most good sermons work. Preaching to yourself rather than to the crowd. Right? We're there. And we would understand why John was doing this. And as I read this lesson this week, it really hit home. Because John gets to the end when they're talking, and he's told all these people what they need to do, that it's really just simple kindness. Right? Don't... Take more money as a tax collector than you're supposed to. As a soldier, don't exhort money from anybody. Don't try to take money away from them. Just take your due pay and go about with it. And if you have two coats, then give one of them up because you really don't need two. And if you have extra food, give it to somebody else who needs it. Right? It's kindness. It's simple kindness that John is telling us we have to do. And it gets to the end and the people look at him and John goes, I baptize you with water. I baptize you with water. But the one who's coming after me is going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. And I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. And as I read that, it hit home. It's like, wow. John's talking about me. And you. It made me think about how sometimes we think more highly than ourselves. Right? We think of ourselves in a way that we shouldn't. We do things that will cause other things to happen that are in our good rather than being kind to others and doing the things that need to be done. This morning sermon is called Return of the Baptist. Not because the Baptist went anywhere, but because it's linked to the, to the sixth movie. Some of you know where I'm going. To the sixth movie of a series of movies of which the newest one will be released Thursday. Right? Return of the Jedi is a wonderful story about the redemption of a person who goes down a long, dark hole, but yet comes out and understands what he had done wrong. It's a story of redemption. 
Which is exactly what John the Baptist is giving each and every one of us this morning, right? If you know something bad is going to happen, and you see a way to get out of it, that's good news, even if it comes in judgment. Judgment can be good news. Because it stops the path that you're going down, right? In the movie, Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader goes down a path and follows the dark side, the evil side that's in each and every one of us, right? Martin Luther told us we are constantly saint and sinner. We're both and. Saint and... i got to remember which hand it's on. Saint and sinner. We're simultaneously both and, which means inside of us is light and dark. And Vader went down the dark path, following after things that could get him power and prestige and all that he thought he wanted in the world. And each and every one of us has that power, that desire, that drive within each and every one of us to go down that path that's easy and gets us the things that we think we want. But yet at the end of the movie... He's redeemed and brought back to the light side that never actually left him. Because you see, we're not worthy to untie the thongs of the sandal that comes after, the man that comes after us. And that's an interesting link there. Something that I learned this week that I had never known before. Twice in our lectionary reading for this morning, the word worthy is used. Right? John says, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee the wrath that is to come? Produce fruit that is worthy of repentance. And then here later he says, The one who comes after me will baptize you with fire with the Holy Spirit, and I am unworthy to bow and untie the thong of his sandals. Same word, right? In English it means the same thing. It's not the same word, though. And the, the job of untying the sandals was the job of a slave. Not a disciple. Not a friend. But of a slave. And if it's about worth, John is saying that he's not good enough to be Jesus' slave. It's really not about worth. The word here, which brings it home to each and every one of us, the word for worthy, when John says, I am not worthy to bow down and untie the thong of his sandals, the word there is, John is saying, I am not adequate to untie his sandals. I'm not up to the task of untying his sandals. And that's the place we need to be. Understanding that we're not in control, that it's not about us, that it's about this baby that we're lighting these candles waiting for, that it's about a person who's going to come into this world to give us complete light and complete love and complete understanding and take us from the depths of the pit that we drug ourselves into and pull us out, clean us off, and make, make us acceptable to stand in His presence. Not because any of us are adequate, but simply because He loves us. So believe what John has said. We're all part of a brood of vipers. But take it as good news, because that's exactly what it is. Because we have the understanding that this baby that's coming in a manger is going to lift us up and give us a life that no one else can if we'll only believe Him and follow Him where He's leading us to. So follow Jesus knowing that life will not always be easy but it will be the exact life that God has prepared for you.